You're listening to the Unfinished Projects podcast with your host, Amy Chance. And now for the show. Welcome to the Unfinished Projects podcast, where rejected ideas are accepted. I'm Amy Jans. Today, we have a very special guest, comedian, wrestler, producer, Benel Jamosin. I, I, hear, I, I hear you people cheering in my mind. It's wonderful. Yes. It's wonderful. In my mind, there was a, a, a stadium, a football stadium cheering. Yep. Oh All co- oh, everyone COVID safe. Very socially distanced. Uh, That's good. But losing their mind. Oh, my uh, God. Yeah. How have you been making out during this whole COVID thing? Because, yeah, it's been two years since we've seen each other in human form. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it was, uh, yeah, it's very, very weird because I've been watching sort of everyone, uh, the world kind of fall apart. And then, like, everything kind of works out for me in the end. <laughs> like, like, two years before this, I was, like, doing the thing that everyone else does is just, like, going through my life. And then the entire world hit a hard reset button and uh i coming out of it like i've had so many stories of people going like you know i've lost relationships i've lost parents i've lost whatever and they're like i'm sorry uh, you but, lost uh, a parent no just like i've seen people oh have those oh. stories where it's like i've lost so like i've lost this i've lost that yeah. i was like yeah. oh but no what about you how did you your pandemic go and i'm like i started a business and got back with my ex-girlfriend like things been working out pretty solidly for me that's awesome i started a business i go i work out uh i I got back together with my girlfriend i'm in like the best physical shape i've ever been in my life i could do a backflip like (laughs) i've kind of won he really can he's not exaggerating i've seen the wrestling uh clips yeah like i I'm sort of flipped i i've i've done flips and will continue to do flips i'm like in a good mental health state it's always like it's so funny like everyone else has like said they were gonna do all these things during pandemic and and, and inevitably they just like turn into drink into like mushes of people and like me projects yeah and me i just like i don't know i during the pandemic i bought it i bought a guitar learned how to play guitar uh you know started drawing again bought board games like i literally did all the stuff all I needed was like a global pandemic to really get my life squared up. That's really what what I needed. Finally, the push I need to do all the things I, I wanted. Would you say that you're an ambivert? Like, uh, um, you love being around people, but also you need your alone that, time. I'm I, like the older I get, the more alone. The the more that pie turns into like. I need to be alone 60% of the time and then around people like 40% of the time. And it's going to get that amount of time around people is going to get smaller and smaller. I think yeah. the older I get. I'm um, the same I, way. And I think ambiverts and introverts are the ones out here thriving. So what's been going on? So you mentioned you started a, a production company. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I started, I mean, lost and Leon, my, one of my, my best friends, Lawson. Lawson, you know, we were doing this show called Brooklyn battle comedy. Uh, which was a comedy show where, you know, every month or two, we would have a wrestling match in the basement of this bar uh, in uh, in Prospect Heights and stuff. So we, like, would set it up, just do... It's an excuse for us to do wrestling bits and then do, like, an, uh, like a, you know, ring, uh, open ring match in, in, the, uh, in a basement and stuff like that. And it, it wasn't... It, it, it like I got, it got a nice buzz behind it where it's like people were like oh we really like this and then we actually had wrestlers come along and start doing stuff with us and we were about to set up another show when the pan- pandemic hit like right as we were starting and around this time I started is when also I was starting the train to be a pro, pro wrestler so I was just like <laughs> learning the skills to actually put together a pro wrestling match uh, and uh, so when the pandemic happened uh we were i was able to put money aside and i was like well fuck it i got all this time i'm gonna produce some film uh called broken battle comedy we, we make movies which is basically my my version of like i would like i would love to do airplane but with wrestling so we i love that we did that basically had a hired yeah I, I hired Hannah Hart- we hired Hannah Hartness 
to write the script. Uh, and then we hired like a director and an editor. You know, we got like, you know, uh, got a composer. Like we got a script together. We got a crew. We got a cast. We shot in August uh, of last year, three days. The, the film starts, stars, you know, professional wrestler MB Young uh and uh professional wrestler cpa uh, as the leads and we just basically used it as an excuse to basically put together a bunch of very funny bits and film and stuff like that and, and where uh, can people check that out you can watch the entire series we we split it up into uh seven uh episode web series called brooklyn battle comedy we make movies it's on independent wrestling.tv which is like the number one source for independent professional wrestling uh available it's a subscription what is it called again independent wrestling.tv it's basically netflix for independent professional wrestling if you ever want to know what independent professional wrestling is about the that service has everything you could possibly imagine from like the series the the most death magic you know blood and guts promotions to like you know independent promotions from all over the world and then stuff like what we do which is just like you know the adult swim show of professional wrestling uh, um do you uh there's a show on adult swim called development tv or something development where you can pitch them i think totally pitch them this we've been trying to get their ear for <laughs> for a year now because we think like our idea was hey we're, this is basically a Tim and Eric version of a wrestling show. This would go great on Adult Swim. Uh, yeah, I'm visualizing it. I, I think that would be so cool on Adult Swim and unique too. I don't, I can't recall anything like that. Yeah, and uh, I mean, we're not the only ones. There's plenty of independent wrestling promotions that would fit great at Adult Swim, like tons of them. But we kind of want to be the first because, like, this whole thing isn't. We're not a wrestling show. We're a tv show that happens to involve wrestlers so like uh that that's our goal is like we're a production company we're not a wrestling promotion you know we don't have title belts we're not uh, sports we are basically our, our idea is that we're the larry sanders show of professional wrestling we're we're you know we are the sarah silverman program of professional wrestling okay uh, so it has like, a little bit of an aspect of like a talk show, but behind the scenes kind of. It's kind of like, yeah, it's a comedy show behind the scenes of what a I wrestling mean... show is. And the wrestling show is, the, the wrestling is the wrestling, but the comedy is weird and it goes all over the place. We have a referee called Horse Ref that we summon through uh, singing a song. And he's a horse. He's one third horse, one third referee, one third man. <sighs> Like, oh my god and he gallops to the ring he it's like <laughs> brooklyn battle comedy is really special it's really fun and i love doing it so i'm excited I to do more that. of it it sounds like the perfect sprinkle of absurd that i love i love absurdity but it so sounds also super grounded in both the wrestling and comedy niche yeah yeah, the people that oh watch God. it love it. And the people that, like, it's one of those things, like, I love the idea of being nine people's favorite thing. Because I grew up watching, like, uh, have you ever watched um, uh, things like, like, internet things like, um, like, eagles turn horses into people? No. Is that on YouTube? Yes. Okay. I haven't, uh, but um, I'll have to check it out. Eagle, yeah, eagles turn into what? E eagles are turning people into horses. <laughs> Hold on, it's I'm like a, it's it. a fifty it's a fifty minute short film by the guys who did it's Lonnie, which is another one of those things that's like if you're on the early internet and you like kind of discover these weird like short films or short movies that they, they, they kind of become your your thing it's yes they, that's kind of like what is it called again eagles 
Or it was like turning uh, people into horses. Okay. Okay. Oh, I see. Oh, I like that. I know with uh, copyright, I'm just going to show a 15 second uh, clip for fair use. But I just yeah, kind of want to get it. I like getting a feel for what you're. Um, oh, whoops. Hold on. Okay, fair use. I don't want to disrespect their copyright, but I get it. Okay, so it's hey. a uh, it's a web series. Um, actors, it's scripted with um. Okay, and it's a short film. Okay, it's I'm definitely like gonna check that out. Film. Very oh, funny. It's a part of the uh, NYU thesis film. Cool. Yeah, those guys went on to do a bunch of different things. I think they ended up working for College Humor. They're they're fucking great um but things like that things like the juggernaut bitch like we've all watched the juggernaut bitch if you I were like have. part of the early internet have it it's insane i got to. i will definitely check it out oh my god so that's so cool so, so like there's like started... those... oh go ahead no i was gonna say like those kind of things is like i love those because those are like they're the nine people's favorite thing. Think like they're not widely popular. They're not everyone's. No one knows about it. But the people that know about it, they can quote chapter and verse. And that for me is the kind of art I really gravitate towards. And it was really art I gravitate towards yeah. making it because I know I'm not like I did stand up for ten years and I'm not pop like I know I'm not popular. Like I know Same. what kind of person I am and what kind of fan fan base I have. Like the thing I do is in mainstream, and it, and that's the thing about art making, where it's like you will probably not be successful if the thing you do is honest. Like, yeah, the thing is you do is honest to you, not not to anyone else. Right. Like, there's a bunch of people who are successful by doing the things they do, and that's fine. But ninety ninety percent of ninety percent of the things you do and you create will not be popular. And being an artist is that is like still doing it, even though it's like still oh, doing it. This is not gonna work, but like people aren't gonna like this. But this is what I want to do. I know exactly like, what you mean. It's either like, but here's the thing, though. I think with TikTok, it's helping people realize how important it is to be yourself. And uh, it's so weird. Like, um, so there's that flip of the coin where it's like, all right, if you do what you like and don't kind of, um, you know, do, uh, let's say with comedy, don't do totally like club jokes. Um, you know, you can find your cult, cult group, but it won't be commercial. There's that. But also, I'm kind of thinking there's a little bit of a shift where people are looking for that individual thing i feel like with tiktok um you could either do like the trends and some people get successful that way but then the people that are doing these weird videos they're blowing up finally yeah. um but i know exactly what you mean there is that that thing where it's like if you stay true to your guns it won't be on cable per se um but you will find your crowd like an underground cult lover crowd. Yeah, and, like, and, and it's all about consistency. If you are consistent in your your product, then then people, some people will find it. Um, you know, yeah, it's folks, like like if you know if any of you know Four Star, Team Four Star used to do the Dragon Ball Bridge series, which ended up them doing a bunch of other stuff, but they have just consistently been plucking away at their same kind of quality of their material and the material is like is very much them not all of it hits but they have their fans and you have to be cool with that like you have to be cool with with like being an artist for me isn't like because i feel like that's a lot of the pressure the young artists face is like i have to be popular and i have to be successful and like yeah. the process of art making does it is irrelevant whether you are successful or not. 
That's why that I is say. so true. Yeah, it's like as the person making it, sometimes it feel discouraging when people. It feels like people aren't watching, but the thing is, the artists that continue, they continue, and like you were saying, are consistent. They have that hardcore crowd, and then it's worth it. But it's like you can't see as being the creator. You can't see that it's making an impact until there's that little breakthrough of one person being like, hey, I watched. And then that, oh, yeah, that yeah. one person being like, hey, I watched is like it reinstores uh, why, why we do this. So. Yeah, it's it, and it's like to the like, and that heart that oh, that that one person coming up to you go like, "Hey, I saw your thing. It was really good." Man, does that wash over me like a great wave? Because at that point, I'm so detached from my work that like all I can say is "Thank you. That's wonderful," or "I really appreciate that." But like when you're in it and you finish it, it is almost like you exercise it from your your body. And you just have yes. to have that. You have to have that that thing where your perception of the thing that you just did is tries to align with everyone else's perception of that person really enjoyed the thing that I did. Uh, so I have to honor that as a as a writer, and I have to honor that as a creative. Like the audience, well, I have to allow the audience to have the thing I just created. And in and, and also, yeah. if you want to go negative, if you want to talk about the negative, someone can should go. Sh people should be able to come up to you at the writer as a creator and go like, "I didn't like that thing you did." Which, as a creator, like I know it's devastating for a lot of people. You have to take that too. That's also part yeah. of the create the, the creation process. And that's like, how you, you also, grow too. Absolutely. Like, oh my god, that's why. That's one of go go ahead. I was just thinking about how I loved our writing pods, me, you, and Maurice, like just sitting at Whole Foods. And I was like, that was when I started seeing my writing get better at not doing mics. Like mics for me don't actually help my, they do a little bit, but it's actually like us, me being like, what do you think of it? And honestly telling me and just seeing your reaction to be interactive like because stand-up it's it's interactive but not in a way of like oh yeah hold on yeah. let me let me figure out why that went over your or not went over your head in a way of like m more blame on me like i didn't frame the the setup properly so it's like i couldn't i wouldn't be able to figure out that i didn't set up and frame it properly um live but when we sit down and we wrote together that like being like, hold on, marinating in it and being like, hold on. All right. That didn't work. What if what? And then kind of asking questions that I was thinking about that the other day I, that just helped. And I really uh, loved our time, our, our writing groups. Yeah, that was a that, that was such a that was a that's such a time that was like such a time for me because I, that is when that was like kind of the peak that was kind of where i was starting to peak as a, like a creative in the in the field like i felt like i was like very sharp and i was just getting the opportunities that i wanted and that's when i feel like my efforts started declining a little bit like why we declined you and maurice get better and better i mean for we me i felt like i am i I felt like I was, for me, I was great at helping you guys out because I was like, I'm able to look at it. I was able to look at, at it from an outsider's perspective and like very break it down mathematically and work on communication. And like for me, but for my work, I was like, there's nothing in here that we I was particularly help. proud we of. All help. the things. Every... No, that's not what I'm trying to say at all. <laughs> No, yeah, you ruined my career. Is what I'm trying like, to get at. It for me, really I gave you guys the you. gems, but you guys didn't give me the gem. No, it, it, no, it, it wasn't that you but, guys didn't give me the gems. You yeah, guys were really great at like shoring up a lot of my things, but like for me, I had sort of, I had the voice that I thought I was. I, I, I had my own defined voice and my own defined point of view of 
uh, what I wanted to go to where I wanted to go at. And yeah. um, you guys were still uh, um, you were a new thing. You were like a new way. And for me, I was almost starting to look at the exit door of comedy. And just like, okay. all right, like I, this may not be working for me anymore. Like I'm not getting the same thing out of it. it feels this this process of enjoy the people that I'm around, but I, that's it. I'm enjoying the people that are around. If I'm not around these people, I don't I don't write these jokes. Is how I started to look at things. And I was just starting to look at what's the new thing I could do. I like because I get that. very bored. I'm like a I yeah I get very bored. I'm like, what is the new thing I need to learn? Because like I oh. know how to write jokes now. Like I know and how to that's... do this. Like I and been and the career side of comedy holds no interest for me. So if there's no growth, there's nothing really I want here. Like I could I could do the same thing where I just go to do shows and you know do stand up and whatever and like and like write new jokes and do and go to people's shows and do the social thing, but that holds no appeal because I'm not getting better. You know. I'm just, I, I'm just doing the same thing. Yeah. Do you feel that if there was some sort of elevation or something, that would change your mind about that? Because for me, yeah, I, I'm not seeing growth, but it's just like there's nothing in the equation for me of writing alone, going on stage to my uh, mics, everybody – is in their notebooks there's no opportunity to get uh feedback and and know how to fix it like i feel like i spent years babbling and i i had no idea because it's such a two-way thing but the thing is it's um I wish that there was more, um, there was more like, I don't know, way to collect data from our stand up sets. Yeah. Yeah. Like, why didn't it go right? Uh, I would get off stage. I have no idea why I bombed, but that is why I've recorded it. But there's only so much you can get. But I know what you mean. But also, Benel, if there was one opportunity that came to you, that may have changed your opinion you know like maybe maybe like i think about it all the time because because i know what a working stand-up's life is like and like having seen the very the people that i know are successful and like the way they have turned this thing into a career it's not it doesn't appeal to me really <laughs> like the idea is that you wake up in the middle of the week at 12 noon get on get on a flight if you don't go, have to work a day job. If you don't so, have to work a day job. It's like you get up, you go to a flight, you go to a show, you do three shows that weekend, you get paid, you come back home, you do it again. And like a lot of these people are lonely. A lot of these people spend most of the time by themselves. They don't have any real connection to people outside of like comedy clubs and bars and they're either trying to get on TV or they're on TV and then are not doing comedy because they're on TV or they're staffed on the show. Like the the career part of it, it's like it's not the thing I want. Like that's even if you can get opportunities too. Even like, if you, I know yeah, if you can get the those opportunities. the depress the sad part comes from like okay, I'm doing it, doing it. I don't know. I I want to grow. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Wrong. I don't know how to improve. And I'm socially. I kind of get nervous going to shows alone you know i be like hey come to the, come to the, you know i yeah. i know i've been like but i'll come to the show or uh you know but going to alone you just end up standing there and people look at you weird and then i yeah, try to make conversation and they go what's wrong with this girl it's like i'm just trying not uh, like i'm trying to <sighs> make friends i don't know but there's nobody it's, it's such a weird thing it's kind of like ooh, uh I don't know, but when you find your you, safe people, it feels so yeah. good. Yeah, and then you have like yeah, you have your click, and then you have like people you know and people you're friendly with, and then yes. uh, but then you have that comedian, like 
palaver, that conversation that all comedians have, that rapport, that rapport that all comedians just slide into, where they're all we're all buddies, we're all busting each other's balls, and at the same at at some point, some point a few years ago, I just got fucking tired of it. Like I got tired of you know punching up people's bits in conversation. I'm like at some point, I just wanted to have a conversation with friends. Yeah. And people would fucking float in to the conversations <laughs> at the edges and come up with bits. And I'm like, I'm, I'm I know. talking to my buddy, bro. When I don't... you say float in, I actually know exactly what you mean. Yeah, in comedy, yeah. it's just like, come right in, buzz, you know, got a drink in their hand. <laughs> come in, come in, talking to you like they've known you forever. I'm like, motherfucker, I've known this dude. I literally would, I would be such an asshole because I would be like, I've known this motherfucker for 10 fucking years before comedy <laughs> who the fuck are you what is your name i've literally at one point asked someone point blank what is your fucking name oh, what, the... what is your name oh what is... and then he tried to introduce himself to me i'm like don i'm gonna fucking shake your hand you literally what interrupted the... me while i'm talking to a friend of mine Aww. as if we were friends as we were in equal st- and that that presumption yeah. got like after the point i got tired of hanging out with comedians and just like doing the fucking it same is, thing, and I'm like, if, if I'm you hang out. out at the comedy club, it's like that because I can understand. Like people are so nervous, you know, especially if they're new or alone. I, you know, I, I, I could understand. I was like that. I was, I was also like yeah. that. I was also in that, same. in that space for a while, and then I, like, I got out of it because I got shit that I care about outside of comedy, and I felt well, like a lot of people. A lot of people get trapped in that comedy is everything thing. And I'm like, yes. And you are not what you do. Everybody out there is like, uh, you know, I think if you're solely focused on one craft, which is a, a good way to go, because, you know, I think about that all the times that I'm like, okay, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. What if I just did one thing? But also it becomes your self esteem. And then you have to be like, okay, I am not what I do. But it's like your worth becomes attracted to a success that you cannot control. You have zero control over being, you know, a famous. You have some control in a sense. But at the end of the day, if you don't want the numbers, uh, you know, having art art will be connected to that number uh, game, which is sick. But if you cut that. Um, but I'd also like to point out that doing other stuff, it ends up connecting to comedy. Like wrestling connects to comedy. I would say it's that performance. It's that oh my razzle god. dazzle. Oh my god! It's Let me so tell connected, you. right? Let me tell you how. Like I'm such. A, I'm glad I did comedy for ten years because, like, I kind of got a heads up. I kind of got a like leg up on the performance aspect of wrestling, which is like so much of it. Where, yeah. And I bet you, you incorporate comedy in wrestling. I did a comedy match uh, this Wednesday. So, a yeah, big... you're still a comedian. My character is also, yeah, my character is a fucking comedian. My character is a, talk, is a, is a pig. Like, it's a wrestling pig. Ham? ham? Yeah. It's, is that it's a, yeah, a, yeah, you could say ham. You could say H-A-M. Uh, A-H-star, A-star, ham. Like, he's a wrestling pig. <laughs> Like he can't speak, he only says the word oink. Uh, the way he, the way he communicates is through Adult Swim style bumps, like the Adult What's Swim that? commercials. Like if you ever seen an Adult Swim commercial, it's just black screen and then white text. Yeah, those are the, that's how he that's how he promotes his matches. Like, oh my god. I- Everything he does is comedic, like is either comedically tinged. Like I, I'm still like very much physical in the ring. Like I'm still doing stuff, and like uh, one of the things I get is like, "Oh, he, mo- you move very well for a guy your size." And I'm like, "I'm not that big, but okay, thank you so much." It's a weird way of Wait, calling. What you kind fat, of but... compliment is that? It's the weirdest compliment. It's like saying you're fat, but you don't look mm-hmm. like you're fat in there. Right. I'm what like, the All right. heck? I'm like, yeah, fair enough. I'm a, I'm a, I'm wearing a pig mask and I'm, I'm throwing myself around. Like it's fair enough. I shouldn't. Gotta love like, the I entertainment sh- industry in general. <laughs> but I love wrestling because it is the entertainment industry boiled down to like it removes the artifice of a lot of entertainment industry. Like wrestlers know that they're the, they're the circus clowns. Like they are aware. 
like wrestlers are aware that they're one step up from a trained circus bear. They are like very much. I, there's a lot of ego, but the ego is like at the end of the day, we're rolling around in uh, tight pants with glitter on our body. That's and it's like the joke the fuck, is yeah. on the audience. Almost, it's like it's all sat- satire. You know, it's all like a character. Yeah, if, right? if you, if, yeah, if you are, if you're an audience member, if you go to a wrestling show and you're like, oh, this is so fake, you look like an asshole. You look like the biggest, the biggest bummer in the fucking world. Because yeah, right. everyone knows it's stupid. I know. I remember in so third much grade, fun. third grade people. People would be like, I think it was still W E at the time, dating myself. Um, but no, in third grade, everybody, like, oh, wrestling's fake. Yeah, like it's like, yeah, it's entertainment. Yeah. Anyway, it's the best. It's the best so, fucking thing because it doesn't have the artifice of like it's not. No comedian, no wrestler is going like I'm a truth teller. No, we're not. Right. Where they tell you straight up, I'm this here to lie poetry. to you. They're like, I'm here to lie to you. I'm here to fool you into giving me your money. I will literally pretend I hate this fucking guy that I took this car trip with. And we're going to act like we're going to kill. We want to kill each other. And you are going to believe it because we're going to suspend. We're going to make you suspend your disbelief. Uh, the flip in comedy is like comedy. So it so needs to be taken seriously and so needs to be considered right. authentic. But Which is do- ironic. Like, which is ironic me, guys Come as on. a comedian as a comedian right. we rehearse everything we're gonna say nothing we say is authentic yeah we don't actually come up with this stuff on stage occasionally like most of the time like 90 percent of the comedian set is not improvised and those right. comedians and that, that do improvise their sets making it seem right right it's like there are know. comedians that improvise their sets and those sets do not string together <laughs> It's a cool act, but yeah. it's, it's like you you want something rich, trust me, folks. Oh, he I, just came up with that up top. I've mm. done all techniques. I've tried that, and I like go. I am. Embr- I love going off the rails. I love it, but I don't think the audience does. So it's like, okay, I'm being selfish with my curiosity to see how they react. If I just kind of, I like to turn this button on and I let it just go ride on. Just go. Yeah, All right, it. let's see where this yeah, goes. That that knob you the need. The audience to, you, goes like this. Is she you need okay? To know, you need to know when that not when to turn that knob off and like yeah, exactly. tie it into something because they want you to make your point. Get it, right. get it there the way you want to get there, but make your fucking point. And I think that's what stand, like a lot of standups lose that in the rant. I've done it before. It's yeah. so fucking fun to when you're you're going, but you're going and you're like investigating something on stage but at some point fucking button it the fuck up brother because we, yep. we got shit to do at the end right. of the day it's a, it's still a performance you are not performing you're not performing an actual conversation you are performing a monologue that is and true so, the tighten best... that shit up yeah tighten that shit up is all i'm saying the whole like... art is so you look like you're just coming up with it. And that's oh. it's like you gotta be serious in 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 the telling of it. Like, oh, by what's the deal? Or I'm not here to do Seinfeld. Yeah, yeah, dude, no, the, Seinfeld the, the, ruined what's the deal? What's the deal? Seinfeld yeah, what's the deal is such a deal? great phrase, but like it is sort of like he did yeah. kind of ruin it. Hey, what's yeah. the deal or why is that? The asking questions on stage, I used to Have fucking you ever noticed? Hate it. I, yeah. I used to hate asking questions on stage because I was like, you're supposed to tell jokes, not ask them. But yeah. like, it's such a great device for it setting is. up your it, premise. It is. And plus, it kind of helps weaving crowd work. Even with uh, TikTok, I watch these how to grow your TikTok. And they say that you need to ask a question right from the fir- first second. Want to know blah, blah, blah. But it also seems... um artificial it all it also is. seems you know um yeah i don't know it seems it seems it makes it's, it's like it makes it seem scripted but yeah i feel like for like you have like for me i've like tried before i stopped doing stand-up like i tried to do the thing where i try to make the question seem authentic in performance like actually mm-hmm. asking something that i wanted to know 
and then yeah. telling you my thoughts on it and then leaving it up to you to like figure it out or presenting a premise right. in a way where it's like you this is a thought i had and it occurred to me this and i wonder why this is and investigating I, that I, and then so you can't fun. be mad whatever you say because it's coming from your point of view you know but yeah. some they just ask a question and go right into it why blah 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 blah, blah. and it's like hold on wait. give it a second yeah if, if anybody who's listening to this who's planning to do stand-up shut the fuck up just a second just shut the fuck up when you're that doing is stand-up. true and it's hard learning how, to <sighs> learning how to shut the fuck up it's a big was part. my first three or four years in stand-up is learning how to and in wrestling i don't talk my character doesn't talk in wrestling for that reason like i made it so that my character is mute so i have to physically act out everything that. i'm thinking so if i want the it audience to know people, something it gets them on their seat too like this like curious it it picks like, curiosity like what's going yeah. on yeah and how like yeah well, why is he like like i will build up a moment and then just allow myself to build up moments so one of the things wrestling taught me is building up moments like mm. moments are more important than the thing you're doing like, right, it, it, we, building up the tension uh, yeah. and release. My, yeah, my mentor is always like moments over moves. Like it doesn't matter what oh, you do I in the ring. That. Make it moments a moment. Of... Ooh, that's Make it epic a right there. If I knew that in stand up, I think I would have been further away, further along in my career than I than I was. If I learned I feel... to have a moment, le- I feel like you'll be back in stand up. I really do. I, I, I do have things I want to say, but it's like yeah. the process of it is such a draining. It's so much. It's a time conceit. And I would have to stop wrestling to focus you know on what? it. Uh, what would be cool is getting big with wrestling and then getting that platform to go right into booking shows instead of because you you've already done the mic route. You know, like that's None that's what I always are... think would be so cool is to just, you know, go right into doing shows. Because, you know, the open mic, I mean, I like mics. I really do. Um, but, you know, after working a day job and then doing the mic and just being open hungry mic. and just oh. like I, I smell like it's I was thinking it's not sanitary to be out of the house for 25. Uh, like I'll be out of the house at 7 a.m. to go to a day job and then you don't come back, Um, I, you know, back in the day, like. 1, 1 a.m. maybe later and it's 1 a.m. to 4 a.m. like sometimes you get sanitary. 4 a.m. I need to change yeah that's why yeah, it's nice it, to be in Manhattan I you know like that would be nice to it, do stand up living in Manhattan so you could go home and change very in funny watch it it's very funny like at the t- like when I was doing stand up I was like thinking I was like didn't occur to me that ho- how many other open micers were rich like it did not occur <laughs> to me at all right like so coming off of open like micers a, living in manhattan with their own living apartment well own apartment like i'm 40 like i've worked 40 hours a week like oh. i'm living in the fucking bronx in the in the fucking projects doing open mics like try to do five hours a night and these dudes are like yeah no i did like four or five open mics a night for yeah. you know two years i'm like now, like only in the pandemic, when I saw these fuckers' houses, like I saw where they left the city to, I was right. like, "Holy shit, you were rich the entire fucking time. Right. That's why you were able to do open mics so much, cosplaying the 41. struggling, Gosh. motherfucker." I, I know. Was, I believe me. I was like tickled fucking pink at the other that idea. <laughs> I'm like, just like. This motherfucker asked me for two dollars to buy a slice of pizza. This motherfucker lives in a mansion. He's got his mom's money or dad's money, whatever gender um money. You got you got parents' money. They're floating you money yeah. every month, and you're working like gig jobs so you can pursue your yeah. dream of stand up. So and then when the, the pandemic path... hits, yeah. the fucking bill. And then you come right. back like. And then you come back to your fucking SNL job. Like, I was like, oh, this game, this whole game was rigged. That was the right. thought that I'd... occurred to me. This whole game was rigged. Right. This, meta, this, this meteorocracy thing, this, this metrocracy thing, that shit does not exist. 
And that well, is why just like the careerism, like the, the career part of stand-up. The art is great. Yes. The art making I've, is great. The art the is great. Is. The business part is like, like also us, we got to be on social media. Like I've been trying, I've been really, really trying to get good at social media. And it's just like this part, it takes up a good chunk of my day making clips on Premiere Pro. And I'm like, I did not write anything today because I'm so busy mm. editing. But it's like, the, you know, I look back, I'm like, this is kind of twisted. Why do I have to I'm mark like, my phone? Uh, yeah, like I, I'm not working on the actual craft of writing, but hey, I'm learning graphic design. I'm learning video editing. Uh, anyway, yeah. What, why did I have to learn it, video editing? <laughs> why did I have to learn video editing to do this? God, the, the thing is, it's not even validated. Like, uh, you know, I, I was applying for, I did an unpaid internship at a production company, and I really wanted to get in with. Uh, one of those conglomerate companies, Viacom or ABC. Uh, and no, you know, like my portfolio is my, my videos. Like I spend so much time and it takes skill to edit and make it. And uh, it's not validated, but you know, it's messed up. Like all the work that people put into comedy, it's not validated, which makes me so angry because um, I think anybody doing comedy or any art, you got to be good with uh, um, PR. Like you were the one who uh, taught me, uh, like introduced me about PR. Remember we had our fresh uh, 15 and you got us on the Murph list. Yeah, 15. Yeah, I remember that. And show. that really helped. Uh, somebody came to our show because they saw the Murph list that you submitted us for. And so it's like, yeah, you, yeah, I was like, you are good at PR. That. Yeah, it was pretty amazing. Anyway, shout out to anybody doing an art out there. I see you guys. You're multi-talented. Even if it's not validated for a good paying job with benefits, you should get, um, you know, it should qualify um, certain experience. Anyway, so. Yeah, I mean. So that's absolutely. great. I want to get into your unfinished projects. Um, so that's it. Sounds like you are doing some awesome things. Everybody, check so out many. I Brooklyn. Got my battle. Got my Google. Yeah, this whole thing, like that's amazing. That took probably so much energy and time to produce pre-production, production, post-production, post uh, with all that. So that's awesome. Um, but what about fill me yeah. in about your unfinished projects? Do you have any? I mean, yeah, of course. Like I got I got tons of projects right now. Like I've literally been my uh I got a Google Drive where I just like have all my stuff and like various things. So I like before I started stand up, I used to write fairly frequently as like a short story writer. Uh, usually genre like horror. Horror is my bag, so I, I, so a lot of that, a lot of like early short stories of mine are like, in, a lot of. I've never been able to finish a lot of save my life, and I don't know why. I think I finish, do, but I, on, I think I out. do is I'm very lazy. I don't. I no. Oh, I'm sorry. I think I've I, never been able to finish a novel in my life. Like. The, the, like I don't know why I can't finish a novel to save my life. You I've know what had it great is? Ideas, novels never been able to finish one. I feel like taking away the lazy label. I think you got a lot going on, and it's a matter do one page a day. A novel is what uh, ninety thousand words. So in ninety day, wait, mm -hmm. yeah, hold 90... on. Okay, <laughs> in ninety thousand yeah, days, you <laughs> wait a minute. But if you did 1,000 words, um, it would be done in 90 days. Or if you did 500 words, which is more realistic, because um, 1,000, it kind of is a lot when you work and you're doing all this other stuff. Well, do 500 words. You'll be done in a year. I mean, yeah. But that's the thing. I'm always – I think it, it hasn't – it's not necessarily the laziness. I am very, um, I guess I'm, I'm a short story writer by trade. 
But like that's where I grew up on. I love short stories. But like I grew up reading, you know, Stephen King and you know, P.G. Woodhouse and like you know, like I, I like Clive Barker. Like I, I read short stories my entire life. And so I just want to get to the fucking point. And like a yeah. three hundred page novel, you have to break down things and you have to go very. You have to have a lot of meat there. And I yeah. am very much a quick idea man. I'm like. I'm very much a Twilight Zone half hour guy instead of a Twilight Zone hour guy. Like there's yeah. two Twilight Zones, like the Rod Sterling Twilight Zone that was like half hour, and the Rod- Twilight Zone that was an hour long and it was like filmed like a like a soap opera. I'd rather the half hour ones, since they're quick and punchy and get to the fucking point. And a yeah. novel is not quick and punchy. Right. I'm the same like, way. You can like write uh, a very tense. Go, I like go, short go novel, to the it's point. Hard. Lean into writing short, like lean into what you like, you know. But yeah, uh, I finish a script yeah. and the notes so from I the analysis. Like, I am... Oh, go ahead. Oh, I lost for a second. I... Yeah, my thing is cutting in and out. You say you finish a script and that's from the analysis. What were you saying? Oh, yeah, they were saying um, that it's not, it doesn't have oh, enough, um, like, it doesn't have a, a true protagonist. Like, my character's protagonist was her codependency issues and, like, people not believing in her. And, <laughs> and so, anyway, and they said it didn't have enough whatever, but... For me personally, that that is a valid note. I ha- at first was like resistant, like blah blah blah. Uh, you know that you can be your own protagonist, absolutely. But he wasn't saying that you can't. But anyway, my love, like I, I see movies that have too much of that, like trickery. I'm not into that because I expect it. So you know, it's kind of like what I like. I made, but it's not. You know, but it's like I'm sure that that hasn't been made really what we like. You know what I mean? So it's like take uh like you like shorter stories, so lean into that because there's other people who like that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I feel like it's gonna come together at some point. I'm gonna do it. So far, I've checked off a lot of my things I want to do in my life. So, you know, novel, I'm going to write eventually. Uh, one of the things I did want to talk about, one of my unfinished projects, and when I unfinish, I mean, uh, it, script is finished, unproduced. It's unproduced projects. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm pulling like a few of them out right now to look at them. I had a one man show that I was doing just to get, because I was like kind of disillusioned comedy at this point. I think that I wrote this right before the pandemic. Uh, yeah, I read this like right before the pandemic. I was trying to get the dissolution in comedy, and uh, the it's such a weird thing because this is like the kind of nonsense that I think of. It's called the 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 one man. Well, it's not really even a one man show. It's more like a theatrical production. I don't know what to call it. It's so weird because it's like me doing stand up. It's also sketches. Uh, and there's also like storytelling. And then there's like interactive Ooh. elements, so fucking weird. But it's like my, so it's sort of creative. like my experimental art piece. It's so fun. It, 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 but it's called "I Am the Devil." Uh, it's just my weird experimental, like you know, art piece. That sounds uh, like it'd be so like... cool live. Oh yeah, the the whole notion was it's. Like this is gonna be like a thing you go see, and it's like fairly live. But uh, it, it's hard for me to describe it. It's basically my stand-up special. It like it's it's my stand-up special, but it's also like my thesis on the on art and art making, like why we do what what appeal what what is the appeal of creation like why do why do we sit in a theater <laughs> why do we all sit in a the dark theater 
in a dark room and look at one person talking. Right. You want it is very nihilistic. It is like Yeah. It's very nihilistic. It's from the artist's point of view of why you would do that. And <laughs> I I showed it to people and the thing the note I got back was like, Wow, this is incredibly caustic. This is very mean because it is basically calling calling the audience stupid for not being creative. <laughs> Like, it's, it really is. It's like, it was written for such an, um, a dark place. It is not, and no, it wasn't like I wasn't having, I was going through a hard time or anything. I was right. like, but it is my point of view on why I create things. And like, the, the thesis of it is I am, I don't do, it, it's me being honest with myself or like, why do I do this? I don't do this because I want people to validate me. I don't care if you like me or not. I want your attention. I don't look for anything else. I don't look for your approval. I don't want applause. I don't give a shit. I need you, <laughs> you to just not... want someone to I listen you to, to not... you. Exactly. I don't need you. I need you to not leave the room when I'm talking. <laughs> That's it. I don't care anything else. I don't care a shit about anything else. You can boo me. All <laughs> it would kind of be cool if you leaned into that, like even made it like dickier, and then and then it could be so like extreme that you get that satiricalness in it. You know, I think yeah, crank it up a notch even more oh, and it's, it's uh, lean crank. into that. I'm gonna tell you. It's, I want to freaking see that. You, I guess I guess I can send you. I can send you the draft of this thing because it is fucking cranked. Like I get heckled by the devil at some point, <laughs> and the devil has my exact voice. It's just a pre-recording of me. And like at one point, I like at one point during the <laughs> during the show, I get I I get into a fist fight. Like the show goes off the rail, and then the end sort of sums <laughs> up my to view on like the process of art making which is like like everything I do here is to keep you here is to keep you in the room to keep you uh, your eyes focused on me I do this well enough so that if you don't get it if you don't understand if you don't like it I'm not the problem here you're the problem I love it's so like, funny how committed, you know, because it almost becomes like a char it is like a character um yeah. piece. The character the character is like how I view like the character is like if I were to say the thing I always thought of humanity, this is what it would sound like. This is what it is. It's like if I were to have that honest moment where I don't take anybody else's opinion, I don't I don't err. I don't talk ethically or morally. I just say what I truly fundamentally believe. This is what this looks like. And it is unpleasant. It is no one likes this. And it you know what? I bet you a lot of people would laugh because they're using probably artifice to destroy that. artifice. Yeah. Oh my god. That's I mean, really it, interesting. I mean, it, yeah. And of course it's three layers deep because I can't it's artifice using art is using artifice to destroy artifice and like basically the whole thing is like everything i do here is a lie oh this is why i'm like this is why artists used to be seen as like wizards like they used to convert right. with devils like art making was a process of converting with devils because what we're doing is using artifice to destroy the world we're tearing down the foundations of society by making things that don't exist Right. And it takes like pain to want to, you know, I always kind of was envious of the people who just enjoy going to Applebee's and that's their night. You know what I mean? And now I, I love I love eating, but I got to do more. Like, <laughs> I, you know, if I just go to Applebee's or any, you know, restaurant without creating, I feel guilty. Like I, um, you know, I should be making something. Uh, for me, it used to be hard to just have a night off and enjoy it. And I'm at a mm -hmm. place where I can now, uh, pretty much I can now enjoy um, moments without needing to, like, be contributing to the, the craft yeah. or whatever. It's a, it's feels really good to be at that place. Um, 
But yeah. long story short, yeah, an artist creating, I love that it kind of captures the essence of someone who gets into art. Like they're actually coming from a really painful place and it shows that honestly. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, I'm getting to the point. I'm getting, I'm not there yet. I'm getting there. Like the other day, I just had to be like, sit down with myself and go, Benel, it's okay to not be productive today. Yes. You did a lot this week. You're allowed to sit down and just not do stuff. You're yeah. not you're allowed to just hang out. You work and 40 also, hours a week. On the week yeah. you get dropped on your head sometimes. When you're not doing well, that, you're with your girlfriend and being in a person. Like yeah. yeah. Also, um, I forget that you have to have fun in life. And that actually creates more inspiration. Like, have you ever like, I could be writer's blocked, but then, you know, if I go out, then the next day, I, it's like a well opened up and stuff is co po just popping in. But I sup used to, or I still do, I got to get better at not, you know, be like, oh, you can't have fun. It's been harder with the pandemic. Um, it's not the same, like, going out and having fun. But mm -hmm. when things get back to normal, I think it'll be a priority to just go out and have a crazy night guilt-free. Yeah. yeah. I mean, for me, it's just re redefining what a, what a fun night is. Right. I mean, I realized Laws and I were just talking about this the other day where it's like, he's like, I realized how much of an introvert I actually am where it's like, I am okay. Never seeing another human being for like <sighs> months at a time. I'm the I same way. Yeah. Truly prefer my own company. For me, I am constantly in need of doing and learning new things, mm -hmm. which is why the wrestling is great because like everything I think I can't, I can't, I will eventually try to do something that I can't do and find like a tangible physical reason that I cannot do something. And that makes me want to learn either learn how to overcome that or figure out another thing to do. There's always another thing to do. That's such a great place to be in as a human because, you know, it's like your brain, if we continue to be growing, then by the time we're 80, we can rest on our loins and be like, hey, you know what? I've maxed myself at, or, you know, like I gave myself opportunities. I can't imagine being at that point, not knowing that you, as a person, like, didn't try to learn and didn't try to evolve a little bit i don't know i mean I, when i'm 80 i want to have the funnest dementia you can possibly have like <laughs> i want to be the dude in the old folks home that people go like all right all right mr Wilson, time for time time for supper and i'm like i was a pig at one point <laughs> i was a talking oh, pig that's great oh my god you know i did stand up you know, I told jokes <laughs> to the queen, and they're like, Danelle's insane. <laughs> and then they find an old hat box of just photographs of myself. <laughs> That's what I want the reveal to be. Performing. I love it. I, I, want, I, want, I want the reveal to be, oh, this crazy old guy didn't have dementia at all. I he love was, that. He just led an interesting life. <laughs> I want my life to sound insane. I want right. the obituary, my obituary to sound fucking nuts. Because there's some obituaries out there that are like, wait a second, this guy did all this in one life? This person did all this in mm -hmm. one lifetime. That's what I want. I want Joseph Stalin's daughter's of it obituary. What's her, what is it? So or she's Joseph, she was born in Russia during the right. rise of Joseph Stalin, right? He was the daughter. She was exiled after her father's death. She uh, was part of the swinging 60s in the UK, lunched with the Beatles, hung out with the Rolling Stones, moved to America, like was part that's of impressive. like the anti-war protests, and then died in a shack in Kansas. Like that's her entire life. That's amazing. And it's like like she I could be content with that, you know, like nothing yeah, that, unfinished. 
Yeah. Yeah, you want to go you want, with things. You want that journey. Yes. All right. So the journey of this podcast has been a blast. I have one more question to ask. Okay. If you, a genie gave you a million dollars and said you need to use this on a creative project, how would you use that million dollars? Mm. Oh, man. A creative project? Uh, yeah. Very simple. Like, you know, Brooklyn Battle Comedy is getting my is getting a a series that's like that's going into my series and a, a production that's a studio series. that's getting into like yeah i'm 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 renting space i'm hiring actors i'll be able to pay wrestlers union rates which is what's like i like when i say i made a movie i mean i fucking paid everyone i paid everyone to work on the set wow i paid the yeah and act, back I paid in the stand up you paid i paid, paid, you paid i love that I remember I, I did a everyone. show and you paid, I think, 20 bucks, um, which is amazing for a show in yeah. Brooklyn. Like, yeah, like and I paid it. I paid. The, yeah. And I, I I pay people. I try to pay people as much as I can. And I pay people like it, it might take you a day. <laughs> it might take me a week, but you'll get your fucking money um, because that's what I want. I like. There's nothing better than creating art and then someone giving you an envelope for the money. Yeah. Like, and when I when I got paid in stand up, it was so rare that it felt like I felt guilty for taking it. Now, mm -hmm. like, wrestling is very upfront. They're like, "Yo, you want me to do what? Pay me, <laughs> pay my ass. Well, I'll do it. Pay I me. love that. Also, it's so much uh, on your body, you know, wrestling. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Like, I'll. Pay me in money, pay me in footage, pay me in food, pay, pay me in some way. Don't just give me nothing. And don't right. do the thing where it's like, I'll get you at some, pay me in something. Mm -hmm. Either I'm getting money, I'm getting footage of myself, I'm getting experience, I'm getting something. Pay me in something. Yeah. Even if it's $10, so I don't care. Pay me in something. So what I, right. I will do, what I would do is I, uh, Broken Battle Comedy Season 2 will be bigger and blacker. Like it, it, I will fucking, I would hire union, I would hire union company to do it. I'll, I will get my boy Koji, who directed my first film, into, into, you know, into the director's guild to, to get him directing credits and residuals. Yeah. I would fucking, I will pay my wrestlers like TV, like I will pay them union rates as <sighs> actors. I, that money will and then go they could get a sag card. I will. Oof. Oh. Nothing I want more. Nothing I want more than wrestlers with sag cards. There's <laughs> yes. nothing I want. That's an entire different podcast. Right. But nothing I want more than to give wrestlers fucking sag cards. I would give my comedian friends fucking sag. I will make. I would make it a. I would make it a thing. It would go into this company, and we would have a fucking ball. It would be so much Heck fun. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well, I got my selenite stick. I'm sending um, abundance, wealth, health. All right. This is my new thing. Sel I get this selenite <laughs> stick and like just like energy. Uh, the most it's the most Amy thing you like, could possibly do. It looks like a wizard stick, doesn't it? Look at it. It looks like like uh, it looks like part of Super. Man's fortress in Superman one. You just like it looks like if you jammed it into a bunch of other stakes, like Marlon Brando's head would come up and then tell you the history of Krypton. Yes, it has like this uh fictional vibe about it. But anyway, yeah. All right, money is coming to us. All right, here we go. Anyway, well everybody, thank yeah, you totally. so much for checking out the Unfinished Projects podcast. Subscribe, like, leave a good review if you can. Just want to say thank you so much again to Benel Jermosen! Benel, where can people find you? So we have Brooklyn Battle Comedy. If they type that in, independentwrestling.tv, it'll pop up, right? Yep. Yep, Brooklyn Battle okay. Comedy uh, on independentwrestling.tv. Uh, the Brooklyn Battle Comedy at, at Broken underscore battle and the start county and Instagram uh, at battle comedy on Twitter. Uh, if you, I don't have a personal uh, Twitter or uh, I don't have a personal Twitter, but there's a guy 
who I love, a great professional wrestler called uh, HAM. He is under Twitter at uh, Lucha Pig Ham. Uh, you can go uh, follow him. He's very funny, very cool. Is that. Uh, Wait, so it would be an at sign at Lucha Pig Ham? Yep, on Twitter. Okay, all right, cool. Right. And that that is uh, where you can find all the stuff. Cool. Let me enter that in. Awesome. All right. All right. Well, thank you, uh, Benel, for coming on. It was a blast. I'm happy I got to see you finally after two years. Yeah. Yeah. That when, which when... has been too long. Too long. We need to hang out more. Yes, we do. When I get back in the city, I'm excited to see your wrestling shows. Oh, don't worry. There's plenty of wrestling shows in Jersey that I can invite you to. Yes. Do you go to uh, them in Jersey? Yeah. They, it's uh, Jersey's kind of like a, a second home for wrestling in New York. So, like, I had no it, idea. When I'm in Jersey, I'll, I'll come on. Yeah. Let me know. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Um, subscribe. <clears throat> I'm going to cut that out. All right. Anyway, thank you for watching the Unfinished Projects podcast. Follow Benel Jermosin on all the stuff. Check out Brooklyn Battle Comedy. Thank you for listening to the podcast. Follow, subscribe, and leave a good review if you can. Have an awesome day. Sending you a magical amount of safety, health, happiness, and money.